This time we won't have any docking station, we won't have any hard drive enclosure or SSD enclosure or whatever from Yota Master. Today we're going to have something different. This is their first M.2 NVMe SSD, size 2280 form factor, which is regular of course, and it comes in 512 gigabytes, one, two, and four terabytes of storage. So right here, we have a four terabyte version. This is Y7000 Pro SSD. And it's quite interesting because first of all, this is, I think this is the first four terabyte SSD that I have in my hand that is single sided, if I remember correctly, but I think I have. So this is quite interesting. First of all, because we're having a SSD from a brand that usually does enclosures, docking stations, and all the other stuff as you saw in the past videos. And then we get an SSD which you can nicely pair up with some of the docking stations. Well, not docking stations. Yeah, actually docking stations also have M.2 enclosure, some of those. So quite interesting. And as you can see on the table, it comes in a box, nice box, whatever. But we have additional parts. We have a manual. I think this is a manual. Yeah, user manual. We have heat sink, heat spreader. Let's put it this way, which fairly, I'll be honest, it's a bit thinner than I'm used to comparing to some other brands that ship out the SSD with traditional heatsink. So this doesn't affect much of the cooling performance. This is only good if you're going with a motherboard that doesn't have any type of a, a heatsink. What I would suggest, leaving this aside, if you already have a heatsink on your motherboard, you get two thermal pads, which is kind of logical to place it on top and bottom and you get a screw for tightening up on your motherboard. Now, this, as already stated, single sided SSD, PCIe Gen 4 NVMe M.2 SSD. We're talking about an SSD that has SLC DRAM cache, QLC NAND, which, OK, is a bit different than standard TLC, what we usually have. Uh, it has MAP. 1602A controller. And the thing is, with all the capacity that they offer for the Y7000 Pro, all the specs are the same. And what we usually encountered is that lower storage capacity SSDs in the same brand, same model, same everything, have a bit different specs. This one will be completely the same in all th throughout all of these four size possibilities. Then we have 2400 TBW. The read speeds go up to 7000 megabytes per second. We have five year warranty and the model of chips, uh, well, it's BWNO AQF1B1JCAD. So eh, it's, I don't know, I couldn't find any additional information about the chip but we are already familiar with the controller and it's a solid one. It's not like, outstanding in terms of stability. Well, it is stable, but we're talking about a controller that will do the job. And the price tag, now this is quite interesting. We're talking about $300 and price per gigabyte is 0 0.075. What I would suggest is use it for some sort of a enclosure for uh, having a st storage on the go or for games. Because if this SSD fails, you don't want to have it for an OS drive because you don't want to store your data here. But this is in general for all QLC, right? So don't take this as a negative for Yota Master. Yota Master just did an SSD that has QLC NAND. So it's quite okay. I have nothing against it. In those terms, it's just the QLC NAND. But let's move forward. We're talking here about QLC. so less durability let's put it this way less durability definitely suggestion for a game drive enclosure and similar stuff this could be a good thing if you're running something for ps5 if you want to have loads of storage for ps5 this is really good to have that in some smaller enclosure to run it with your if you're going for somewhere i don't know if you just want to store your data or just transfer data this is outstanding now when we're talking about the speeds and i'm going to start the same way as i usually do as ssd read speed 6238.10 megabytes per second write speed 54 
175.32 megabytes per second. Autodisk benchmark read speeds 6.82 gigabytes per second and write speeds 5.47 gigabytes per second. In Autodisk benchmark, what I usually do and what I usually can check is the consistency. So in read speeds, it went up and down between 6.72. 79 and 6.82 while in write speeds it went from 5.41 to 5.47 so i would say that's pretty stable and i don't think there was any thermal throttling i used it with i used it with amd ryzen 9 x 3d and the msi mpg b650 carbon uh, wi-fi now i also did some real life testing 54.9 gigabyte file transfer speed which went from read 4.2 gigabytes and write 4.02 gigabytes. And then I did something else. Now I wanted to check out the QLC and how it stacks up when you compare it with some additional files on it and when it's completely empty. So Crystal Disk Mark, read speed 7294.28 megabytes per second and write speed 6241.50 megabytes per second. IOPS read 217,684.85 and IOPS write 159,024. Now this is lower than I, what I usually get because usually it's around 800,000. Here we get four times less, but the speeds are there when we're talking about read and write. And when I transferred the 54.9 gigabyte file, on the SSD and ran Crystal Disk Mark once again, the speeds were 7274.40 and write speeds were 6206.14. Regardless of the less speed, when you have some data here on the SSD, it's still more than what they say on the box. I'm just gonna read it to you because it says, it says readout speed up to 7,000 megabytes storage ambient temperature from minus 40 to 85 and the working environment 0 to 70 uh, Celsius degrees. So uh, it's uh, quite interesting basically that even with data on it or some sort of a files or whatever, it still has more speed than what they wrote. So they can easily just write on the box 7200 megabytes per second read and 6200 megabytes per second write. That's outstanding and I do have to say. so. Regardless of the SSD, we have SLC DRAM cache and that's quite good because it kind of makes up for the QLC NAND in terms of performance and stuff like that. But I would definitely suggest it uh, to use it for gaming or enclosures. But let's be honest, they didn't produce this SSD without thinking about it. They went for a cheaper non-memory, right? QLC compared to TLC. And then we have QLC for uh, enclosures for gaming and for the other stuff that I already mentioned a couple of times. So they produce, they manufacture enclosures. They may, you see what I'm getting at. They actually created an SSD that will be perfect for their enclosures. And this is outstanding because why would you produce something if it's more than enough or it just is has better performance than what they, they managed. They created an SSD that will go perfectly along their other products. So if you buy their, I don't know, enclosures, you can immediately buy M.2 SSD. That's it. Guys, I'm quite satisfied with everything, specifically with the speeds, because I did get higher speeds than what they wrote. And I always take into consideration Crystal Disk Mark in general, because it kind of goes way above what they wrote. AS SSD, it's always something strange about it, but when we take into consideration Autodisk Benchmark, I use it more for consistency and to have it in those terms like, you know, let's see if it will thermal throttle and let's see the consistency in the speeds. This is why I have it uh, as a benchmarking tool. This is it. I can say big thumbs up because four terabytes for $300, it's outstanding. And you can always check it out in the links in the description as I do usually. That'll be all for today, guys. I hope you enjoyed the video. I hope it's a bit, it wasn't a bit different, but I went a bit in deep uh, explaining the actual usage, usability of this SSD and how to actually give you some idea on what to and where to, um, well, basically use it. So yeah.
If you're new to the channel and this is your first time watching my videos, uh, don't forget to subscribe, hit the like button, click the notification bell if you desire to catch up on future videos or just bounce back and check out some older ones because I think you'll find some that are quite interesting. Thanks for sticking by. See you next time, guys. Bye-bye.